the integumentary system. This is a, a pretty quick chapter. The integumentary, integumentary system is a body system that includes the skin and its several accessory organs. Um, because the skin has so many accessory organs and append appendages there, it is considered a body system. Um, the skin itself, integument is the skin, also known as the cutaneous membrane. Um, the skin and its appendages make up the integumentary system. There is a fatty layer called the hypodermis that lies deep to it, and then there are two distinct regions, the epidermis and the dermis. And the epidermis and the dermis are joined together by a basement membrane. The skin itself covers the entire surface of the body. Um, it has a total surface area of about 1.8 meters squared. And because of that, we consider it the largest organ in the human body. So uh, let's start to look at this skin and its parts. So functions of the skin. Functions of the skin, it uh, provides protection, cushions, and insulates. It's waterproof. It protects from chemicals, heat, cold, bacteria, and it screens ultraviolet radiation. Uh, the skin itself also synthesizes vitamin D using UV light. It is a, uh, helps maintain homeostasis by regulating body heat and preventing unnecessary water loss. And it serves as sensory reception. Uh, this is due to nerve endings found at the end of our, our, our skin there. Now the first layer is the epidermis. Uh, the epidermis itself is the outer thinner region of the skin. It is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue and it's divided into five separate layers or strata. Uh, the singular would be stratum. So these strata layers uh, from deepest to most superficial include the stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and the stratum corneum. Uh, these uh, epithelial tissues uh, in the epidermis lack blood vessels and uh, they are uh, tightly packed cells. And there are four basic types of cells that you find in the epidermis. There are, are keratinocytes, which are the deepest and produce keratin, uh, tough fibers. Um, it's the keratinocytes that are thick and waterproof. Uh, they provide the barrier between the outer environment and the inner body. And they comprise 95% of the cells in the stratum basal layer. Basal layer. It's uh, this layer where you have a, a constant cell division and the cells are pushed away from the blood vessels, therefore they end up uh, becoming uh, dead. They die off. So the further away that the cell gets away from that lower layer, the dermis layer, um, they will begin to die off because blood vessels do not uh, reach the epidermis. So they lack nutrients and oxygen. <clears throat> the next layer would be the the, the uh, stratum spinosum or the, and stratum granulosum layers. Uh, these are immediately superior to the stratum basal and are two additional layers of cells. Uh, like the stratum basal, the stratum spinosum cells can reproduce by mitosis. Their name is derived from spiny appearance, which is created by those keratin filaments. The stratum granulosum cells are, are flattened cells that get their name from the dark staining protein granules found in their cytoplasm. These st cells still contain more keratin than the stratum spinosum cells, and the stratum granulosum cells are tightly sealed together to form that uh, effective barrier in the skin. The stratum lucidum is uh, basically the area you can likely identify uh, with 
uh, constant abrasions and it gets uh, calluses. Uh, these are the areas of the epidermis that has formed the stratum lucidum. It's just deep to the stratum corneum. This additional layer is found only in, in thick skin uh, and thick skin areas would be the palms of the hands, soles of the feet, elbows, etc. So where there's constant friction force. Uh, then we have the stratum corneum. Uh, these cells are pushed toward the surface of the skin. They become flat and hard and form a tough up, the tough uppermost layer of the epidermis. The hardening is caused by keratinization of the entire cell, which causes the uppermost layer of the epidermis to die. Uh, we constantly shut off these dead cells throughout our, our environment. Over much of the body, uh, keratinization is minimal. However, in areas containing that underlying stratum lucidum, a particular thick layer of dead keratinized cells affords that extra protection. Uh, the waterproof nature of the keratin protects the body from water loss and water gain. The stratum corneum also allows us to live in the biomes such as the desert and the tropical rainforest without damaging our inner cells. The stratum cornea uh, serves as that mechanical barrier against microbes and it also uh, uh, it's a protective function in the skin is assisted by secretions from sebaceous glands and we'll look at glands later in the chapter. <coughs> The la uh, other basic types of cells would be those melanocytes, uh, and we'll look at melanocytes later. Uh, those are dark pigment cells. Merkel cells are associated with nerve endings, and Langerhans cells play a role. When we talk about that barrier against uh, infection, Langerhans cells have that macrophage-like dendritic cells that, that help uh, eat those invaders. So here we can see the epithelium. Uh, we see that the uh, uppermost, we have going from the dermis, we have the stratum basal, the stratum spinosum, the granulosum, and then the corneum. And if you look there, you can see the uh, Langerhans cells. Uh, you can see the keratinocytes, the Merkel cells, sensory nerve endings, melanocytes, all those cells that are in there. So the cells are dead in the corneum layer flat membranous sacs filled with keratin, glycolipids in the extracellular space. Then you get down to the granulosum layer where the cells are flattened, organelles deteriorating, cytoplasm full of uh, lamellated granules, which release lipids and keratin hyaline, keratin hyaline granules. Then you have the cells in the stratum spinosa, which are thick bundles of intermediate filaments made of pre-keratin down the, the other layers, you have, uh, you get down to cells that are actively mitotic stem cells, some newly formed cells because part of the more superficial layers, and then you get down to the dermis layer. And the dermis layer is where we have our connective tissue. So the dermis is a strong, flexible uh, connective tissue. It's considered your hide. It is the deeper, thicker region of this integumentary system and it's composed of those dense irregular connective tissues. Uh, the upper layer of the dermis has finger-like projections called dermal papillae. Uh, the dermal papillae project into and anchor the epidermis. In addition to the dermal papillae, it causes ridges in the overlying epidermis and those epidermal ridges are what we commonly refer to as fingerprints. And they could be spiral or concentric patterns that increase friction and provide a better gripping for, to surfaces or, or gra grabbing things. Um, fingerprints are unique to each person and footprints can be used uh, for identification purposes. So fingerprints and footprints, everybody has their own sort of, uh, everyone has their own fingerprint and footprint and those can be used in forensic science to identify someone maybe at the scene of a crime. The fibers in the dermis include collagen, elastic, and reticular fibers. It's rich supply of nerves and blood vessels. 
It has a critical role in temperature regulation, so that would be homeostasis there. Uh, here you can see the two layers, the papillary, the areolar connective tissue, which includes those dermal papillae, and you have the reticular tissue, which is the network of collagen and reticular fibers. As we discussed in class, um, the dermis contains blood vessels that supply oxygen nutrients to its cells, and those are the epidermis as well. When blood brushes into the vessels, uh, a person blushes. So you get uh, you get that pale or a pale skin develops when blood flows or dermal vessels is reduced. If a person uh, is not adequately adequately supplied with oxygen. Uh, for for example, if you have a lung or a heart disease, such as I did when I was a, a young boy, uh, the person can become cyanotic or turn blue. So this would be uh, cyanosis, uh, blue baby syndrome. Extended periods of diminished blood flow to the dermis can cause the formation of ulcers or bed sores. And uh, the numerous types of sensory nerve fibers in the dermis that take signals to and from those accessory organs of the skin uh, we'll look at a little bit later. So here we can see the dermal layer. So there we have the epidermis, then we have the derma layer. Uh, here we can see the papillary layer and the reticular layer. And in there we have uh, dermal papillae, subpapillary vascular plexus, appendage of the skin, the recti pili muscle, uh, sebaceous glands, the recti pilar muscle is what helps ha uh, the hair follicles stand on edge when you get goosebumps. You have the sebaceous or oil glands, you have eccrine sweat glands, uh, you have the hair follicle and hair foot. So the epidermis and the dermis, uh, A, thick skin, and B is thin skin. So you could see uh, what thick skin would look like. That would be the thick skin, uh, palms of hands, soles of feet. Uh, there you can see what thin skin would look like. So figure prints, palm prints, and footprints. These are caused by dermal papillae that lie atop those dermal ridges. It They elevate the overlying epidermis into epidermal ridges. Uh, they are a, a sweat films uh, because of the sweat pores and they are genetically determined. Uh, you have flexing, flex, flexing creases. Uh, these are deep dermis and continual folds. And fibers uh, include collagen for collagen fibers for strength and resilience. You have the elastic fibers that stretch and recoil. The striae are, are stretch marks. Um, often you can see stretch marks uh, during pregnancy. Uh, tension lines or, or lines of cleavage. These are directionals, direction, the bundles of fibers are, are, are directed there. So you can see the dermis is uh, the receptive site for pigments of tattoos. So when you get a tattoo, those pigments are injected down into the dermal layer of the skin. Under the dermis, you have a layer called the hypodermis. Uh, hypo means, uh, hypodermis is Greek for below the skin. It's the subcutaneous below the skin layer, also called the superficial fascia. Uh, fascia is a band or in anatomy, a sheet of connective tissue. And here we have fatty tissue, which stores fat and anchors skin. Uh, the, that could be areolar tissue or it could be the adipose tissue, which you've learned in histology. Uh, different patterns of accumu accumulation in males and females. Uh, think about where you store fat as a male versus where females would store uh, fat deposits in, in their body.